Hey, Hank Sangria, hope you're soft for you. This your boy, N-O-R-E. What up, it's DJ EFN. And this Drake Chats motherfucking podcast. Make some noise! And, and right now, it's an absolute honor to, for me to introduce this man. Not only is he one of my favorite rappers, he's also one of my favorite people. Like, the person that he is right now, I, I'm the, I strive to be that. You know what I'm saying? As a person that... Who, who who writes his own movies, produces in his own movies, who you could tell he, he handpicks his roles. I do a lot of things in life, and I say, if Ice Cube ain't doing it, I ain't doing it. Like, I live like that, like in real life. I'll be like, yo, somebody offer me pink popcorn. I'll be like, I don't think a Cube would eat that. <laughs> uh, you know what I mean? So in life, I do that. So I'm so honored to have in the building with the Drink Champs. It's the first time hip-hop is controlling media. My brother, DJ EFN, is a DJ. I'm a, uh, a hip-hop artist, and we transitioned. And we now on the journalistic point of view, and yeah. we got what this is like a big, this biggest is, interview yeah, for us. God damn it, the motherfucking West Coast legend Ice Cube in the motherfucking building, man. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all appreciate it, man. That's love. That's now, love. Now, I went to the Paman last night, and yeah. it was. He hasn't stopped it, talking about it. I yo, didn't get to I go. Kid he you hasn't not, stopped talking about it. I, I, I'm going to go out and spend money. Yeah. I, I got I did a preview for free, but I'm going to spend money. I'm going to bring my kids. I'm going to bring my wife because the movie was hilarious from the beginning. Now, so when we speak about this movie, was what, what, how did you get approached to, to, to this movie? Uh, you know, I've been, um, been mm. working with New Line. Thank you. Been mm -hmm. working with New Line for a minute. Mm -hmm. And... Um, they had this project, you know, mm -hmm. that they brought to me. Uh, they said Charlie Day was attached to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been wanting to work with Charlie for a minute because mm -hmm. I, I think his form of uh, comedy, comedy is, is unique, yeah. you know. Right. And so I just knew if we ever did something together, it would be mm -hmm. lit. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it all came together. You know, the director is a guy that he worked with, wow. you know, on Always Sunny. He shot oh, a couple wow. episodes oh, of that. Wow. So, you know, the synergy was right. The the role was right. And, you know, we, we came out here and did our thing. We shot it out in Atlanta. Right. Yeah, that's interesting thing. to me. And then you got Tracy Morgan. The return of Tracy Morgan is in this. Yeah. And he's funny as fuck. In yeah, the joint. Oh, my God. Like, you like... Because sometimes, you know, when a person goes through a tragic right, accident, you, you almost, them. yeah, you, you almost feel like that it's something going to be different about him. But right. he was straight up Tracy Morgan and, and it was dope. hilarious. Yeah, you know, it was just good to see see that dude. Right. Uh, I had worked with him before on First Sunday. Mm. We did a movie together. And, That's uh, right, First Sunday. Y'all yeah. robbed the church. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes, yes, And yes, what yeah. was funny. Let's make some noise for Ice Cube robbing the church. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> <laughs> Gotta go with the money at. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, <laughs> He, he had a, he had an ankle bracelet on his ankle, you know. Like in he, real life, in real life. Oh, so oh, so oh, he oh, had to, after we <laughs> shot, he had to go straight to the hotel, oh. and you know he said, "Man, doing that movie, you know, I really thought right. about it. Got my life together after that. So wow. it was cool mm. to see him, mm. you know, on, on the other side of this accident, and right. you know, just a happy guy. You know, what healthy I mean? He's and a, still being funny. healthy and happy. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm a, I'm gonna be a little bit all over the place because this is something. That 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 it hit me crazy when I watched Straight Outta Compton. Yeah, was your wife comes over to you and says, "How uh, is Friday coming along?" Yeah. So did you write Friday when you were still doing NWA? Yeah, no, no I was. Solo. I had just left the group, mm -hmm. but uh, we wrote it in about ninety four. Me and DJ. What Poole. the fuck? Wait a minute. Ninety four, ninety four. You wrote Friday in ninety four. Ninety four. We shot in ninety five. So wow. Was like, this is around death certificate time or right after? Right after. Yeah, and right then after. it came out in ninety five. Yeah, we shot it. Why it came I out feel like Friday came out later. No, ninety five. Oh. So, but you, you, you. So you had the foresight to to write this movie. Yeah, you know, uh, we was fans of Hollywood Shuffle, which is mm. a Robert Townsend mm -hmm. comedy about. Mm -hmm. You know, black people's experience going right. through in Hollywood. So right. it just we heard that he had he had done that movie off of credit cards, basically. He shot that movie wow. you know, kinda buying credit I mean getting right. credit cards and, right. and and uh, you know, the equipment charging everything wow. and, and, and kinda pieced it together. So we was like, yo, that's what we gonna do. We about to make a movie. So wow. me and Pooh started writing it. Right. We was DJ fans Poo. of DJ Pooh. Mm. We was fans of In Living Color, too, mm -hmm. you know. Wow. Uh, so 
it started coming together and and New Line got wind of it mm-hmm. and they was like, yo, we'll make it, we'll wow, make it, so we'll give you to use your credit cards. No, yeah. we have to we have to use our money, <laughs> New, but New Line since Friday, you've been working with Yeah, I've been New working with wow. New Line since Friday. Wow. And is that Stanley? Is that Stanley? Yeah, that's my man. Yo, yeah, yeah. That's my cousin, I, actually. Yeah, I, I keep on people grass to this day because of him. Yeah, yeah, I say, I don't go on walking people's stuff, grass. Man. Yeah, yeah it's Stan, my man Stanley grass. ain't letting you walk on his grass, man. Nah. God damn it. Let's make some noise for Stanley. Keep yeah. it on the people's grass. So, when you wrote Friday, did you know that this was a cult movie, like, immediately? Yeah. I knew it was a movie that only, like, I felt like only cool people mm. would get this movie, you know, because mm-hmm. it's just too hood, but it's too funny. Mm-hmm. But, it, you know, what happened was everybody got it. You know, right. everybody yep. came to the yeah, party. And yeah. I, I just thought it was going to be like like my records. I thought right. only, you know, people in the hood was going to buy them. Right. And everybody ended up buying them. We kind of felt the same way with the movie that mm. it wasn't too many people in Hollywood like us. And this movie, you know, is a little different than what people used to. Right. Uh, so we felt like only a niche group of people would would like this movie. Because cause that, was, that was very... It was very crazy that you had such a illustrious career as a hip hop artist. You were part of the arguably the best yeah. group of all times, in my opinion, the best group of all times. Then you go have your own solo success. Why did you even think like, let me do a movie next? Um, I got bit by the bug working with John Singleton. Boys he, in the he hood. He put me in Boys in the Hood. Right. And you know, one day I was over at his crib and he was like, "Yo, Q, when you gonna write a movie?" Mm. And I'm like, "What?" Mm. I'm like, John, I came over here to have a beer, nigga. I didn't come over here <laughs> right. to, to, you know, right. get put to work. Right. He was like, nah, nah, I think you can do it. I'm like, what makes you think I could do it? Right. He said, them records you write, you know, mm-hmm. so vivid. I know you yeah. can write a movie. Right. So um, that night, it's a trip. I went to the computer store and bought a computer. Right. And um, got the programs I needed. That was back when you had to load all the damn programs <laughs> into the computer. Uh-huh. And... uh and I started writing the script that night. Mm. Uh, didn't know what I was doing. I just started. It, the first two scripts I wrote was whack. <laughs> Garbage. Probably, probably, probably still worth $400 million. <laughs> but, but, yeah, continue. but, but mm-hmm. you know, the third one was Friday. And, wow. Uh, you know, seeing that one get made, I, I kind of knew what I was doing right, knew what I was doing wrong. Just kept on from now. Who was the director on Friday? Um, F. Gary Gray, the same same director from Strong Compton. And Steve Carr did a Friday too, right? Yeah, he did uh, next Friday. Oh, okay, okay. I worked with Steve Carr before. He's crazy. Yeah, yeah. 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 (laughs) So now, now, Easy E. Yeah, Easy E said one of the most prolific lines in life. Mm -hmm. He said, "Ice Cube, write the rhymes that I say." Yeah. And nobody thought Easy he was a sucker for that. Like, mm-hmm. but right now Drake and all these people, like, how did you feel when you heard about like the, the, the Drake thing? Uh, I don't think it's a big deal. Mm. I think you got two two categories, you know, mm-hmm. of, of of MCs. You mm-hmm. know, you got MCs who could just kind of grab the mic mm-hmm. and just rip, and they, you know, are naturally that. Mm-hmm. And then you got guys who. You know, make good records and make it. You know, and that's really what it's all about. What come, what's coming out to speakers right. when it comes to this record game? Because when know, you were writing rhymes for thing. Eazy-E, were you writing it from his perspective? Were you like saying, "I'm gonna write it or from Eric's," or yeah. was it like it was? I mean, his perspective is our my perspective. Right. Right. We right. all come from the same area, going through the same issues. So yeah. I never looked at it like. I'm yeah. writing the Easy E song. record right. only only he could do. Right, you know it's kind of like everybody could relate. To you know, if, yeah. I, if I just took his name out and put my name in there, mm-hmm. you know, it'd be my rhyme. Now, did know? it happen like that in the movie? Because like in the movie, um, I think y'all y'all was. Uh, Writing around for East Coast dudes, y- y- yeah, definitely yeah. shitted on that. Saying East Coast, uh, I, I, I was <laughs> yeah. definitely disappointed. What you mean? Like, oh, yeah, we're, we're what do you that mean? Time, we're, they couldn't write the rhyme. Him and Buddy, well, shit on them. Yeah, the it is, is, oh, here's yeah. how it really happened. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Easy wanted to be a manager. Mm. He, wanted to, he just wanted to manage the groups. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to rap. Mm-hmm. And New York mm-hmm. was so hot, mm-hmm. and L.A. was so cold. He was mm-hmm. like, man, I want a New York group. Right. So he found these dudes out right. of New York uh, called Homeboys Only, HBO. Oh, I think yeah. I remember them. And, uh, a little bit. <laughs> and he said, um, he was like, yo, write a Q, write one of them 
hood raps for these dudes. Mm-hmm. So I, I did it. Right. But when well, they, it wasn't rolling in 6-4. Was it really rolling? No, nah, no, nah, it wasn't oh, rolling okay. six, uh, It was rolling third period. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I wrote it and gave it to them, uh-huh. and they was like, man, this, what are you talking about? Right, right. Ganking, right. six fold. The slang was all different. Yeah, right. jacket. We yeah. don't know what you're talking about, man. Right. This ain't got nothing to do with where we from. So right. I think it was just the fact that the rhymes was so L.A. Right. They was they just was like, no. And and you asked Easy, you say it Easy? Uh, it Dre. Dre, yeah, Dre wow. told Easy, man, why don't you do it? We got the studio time. <laughs> we, we paid for it. Why don't you try it? Right. Because Dre was producing all kind of records, man. Right. And he was producing... You know, he was moonlighting, basically, right. just producing these side records. So, you know, he was used to working with guys who, right. you know, dudes was paying any money. DJs from radio stations was like, wow. yo, I'm, I got this creative rap I want you to do the beat for. Mm. So, you know, Dre was like that, you know, just trying to trying to get on, trying to get money. And so it was like, easy, I, right. I can coach you up, you know. Why don't right. you do it? Now, in the movie, it was like, you were like the only business savvy person. Like you knew, uh, uh, you knew to ask for like certain things. Yeah. And all the other artists, they were they were kind of. I mean, according to the movie, it yeah. kind of seemed like they were cool with going on tour, getting some chicks, and smoking some weed. And they were, mm-hmm. but you had the foresight to say, "I know that I'm I'm old." Something. How did you develop that business? Mind sense. I mean, you know, it ain't it ain't like I'm from a different planet. Mm-hmm. You know, it's each one teach one. You know, mm-hmm. I had. A publicist. The publicist for NWA was a lady named Pat Charbonnet. Mm. And if y'all if y'all know Friday, mm. y'all know y'all see the name Pat Charbonnet. On okay. it. But she ended up becoming my manager. Okay. But before she was my manager, she was like, as soon as she saw Jerry Heller, she was mm. like, she already knew. Do y'all know this guy? Do you know who this dude is? And I'm like, Nope. Who is he? Somebody easy brought around. Right. So she would give me the game on like, right. Did y'all sign a contract with him? Uh-huh. Like, nah, because she knew his history. <coughs> and and uh, he was known for being a bad guy. I mean, she knew his history. Right. I don't know what he was known for, but <laughs> she was like, yo. So mm-hmm. she starts saying, did he give you kind of, you know, just uh-huh. kind of giving me the game. Wow. So I was I was like, you know, this is a dude I need to watch then, you mm-hmm. know, because if she, I don't even really know her that good. Mm-hmm. And if she's saying to watch him, I don't know none of these people. So uh-huh. I'm watching everybody, and that's how I started to, just notice things uh, wasn't happening. Right. You know, because I was young, too. We all young. We happy to just right. be doing a record. We happy right. to be on tour. tour. Right. We happy to just be part of hip-hop and not right. just locals no more. Right. So, you know, I would listen to that lady, you know what I mean? And and she was giving me a lot of good game, right. and I was using it. And I was helping them too, you know. Right. In the movie, it don't don't show that I go to <laughs> Ren and say, "Look, right. man, don't don't sign nothing." You know, I got wow. You know, so they already knew. They already wow. knew what, something. Where was you up. were coming from? Yeah, they knew where I was coming from. Right. And you know, they clown me when right. I didn't sign that contract, man. And, and it really it was seventy thousand. It was seventy five G. Seventy five G. Wow. Is, is there any reason y'all didn't portray? But hold on, hold on, hold on, the, hold on, hold on, because I don't want you to go there. But do you know seventy five thousand back then was like seven hundred thousand? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. how did you walk away? And I'll go right back to your question. I'm sorry, but um, how did how, like every young black kid from the ghetto it would have yeah. took that seventy five? Yeah. Why didn't you want to do that? I knew they owe, they owe me more. More. Mm. I knew they owe me more. Okay. So mm-hmm. I knew if I took that, then I was accepting mm-hmm. that that I wasn't paid more. That this was cool, and I was like, this ain't cool. Shit, they mm. gave me five thousand dollars. I was happy. <laughs> this thing turned down seventy five thousand. Hey, you know, Jesus. it's like, <laughs> dude, you know when when you ain't never had nothing, right. and oh, sure. and um, you start getting getting a little, mm-hmm. and you start seeing people get a lot. Mm-hmm. And you start saying, "What? Well, hold on, man! I'm putting in mm-hmm. more work than mm-hmm. anybody, or yeah. m- you know, most of the people around. Yeah. You know, just threw up a red flag. And mm-hmm. where I'm from, it's like if you know somebody beating you and you accept it, mm-hmm. uh, you're just a bitch. Period. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> period. Yeah, no. Nah, so I was asking about Arabian Prince. Is there any reason why he wasn't portrayed in the film? Um, well, you know, it's really like in a movie, you only have so much real estate, right, and right. You know, he he got out the group. It's a trip. As soon as he saw Jerry, he was like, I'm out. 
<laughs> wow. Because even the original. Yeah, album, he was. A, the, the album, so he quit the, the day cover. after we shot that cover. Oh. Mm. He quit the day after we shot That's that crazy. cover. He quit. He quit. Wow. He went and talked to. He knew about Jerry. Because wow, right. he had done records with McCullough. Mm. He knew Jerry was sitting there and waiting for artists. Right. So mm. he was like, easy. What's up, man? Why are you signing with this dude? Right. And um, I think, you know, easy was like, he's a dope dealer that's right. making records. And this dude is like, yeah, I'm going to take you off of that, that level and turn it into some legit stuff. And he did get us, you know, he did get doors open. And he right. did get us a deal. You're talking about Jerry. Jerry. Right. You right. know, because... The majors wasn't giving us no deal. Right. It was like, nah, we this right. too crazy. So, uh, you know, he did his thing in business by easy, but he didn't do it by us. The group. And right. then we find out that, you know, he was even stealing from easy. So, <coughs> dude was just, you know, I don't want to talk about the dead, but right. God right. bless. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> the, the guy, At least he was a part of getting y'all out, though. Like, you know, yeah, we wouldn't you have know, y'all probably. You know. That's right. why in the movie, you know, he if you really look at no, it, you right. he, he was, he was uh, we didn't we didn't yeah, lampoon him like we mm. like I wanted to. <laughs> oh, you right. wanted to right. yeah. Yeah. more than we, that. We, right. we, we, you know, we 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 did all right by him. Now you worked with arguably everybody's top five producer. Of all times, was yeah. Dr. Dre always special? Yes, or that was something that it, it was developed in time. He was always special, you know. Wow. First DJing, then doing mixtapes. It was the OG mixtapes, not right. not the new mixtapes, right? Where they just got somebody beat and you rap over it. Because a mixtape back then was mixing records, actually mixing records, mixing blending, records. Yeah. That's what I was doing. You know, uh-huh. yeah. let's, let's make some noise for mixtapes. Yeah, 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 the real mixtapes. <laughs> <laughs> Mixing records, you know, mm-hmm. he was he was hot. He was uh-huh. always nice, you know, right. uh, making beats. It's right. just his, you know, his his ear is he just hears stuff different. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and he's tedious, and um, he liked to he 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 won't let you out that booth till you get it right. Yeah. And some dudes can't handle it. Right. I mean, now I heard he chastised you. Some dudes, yeah. You know, they used to going in there and just spitting. Right. Nah. Nah. <laughs> But that's how I know you was a 100% real artist. I remember we did Pushing Weight, the yeah, remix. Yeah. And you said, Nori has to come to the studio. And you actually wanted to come into the studio and see me write my rhyme. And like that, like you wanted, you like, to me, that's real because when you do a record with somebody, you should share worlds. Of course. Right. And I'm, I I just knew 100%. I said, this guy is 100% authentic because of that. Because I knew you could have you could have sent me the record wherever I was at and I could have yeah. did it. You was like, I'm going to be in the studio with him. And yeah. I, I always knew you 100% real artist for that. Word. that. That's what it's all about, man. You know, mm-hmm. we're going to do a record together. I don't want to send it over to, mm-hmm. you know, we got to be, we got to right. vibe. Right. You know, or... Right. or or oh, we shouldn't do a record together. Yeah, to be and, and we smoked hella weed that day too. Yeah. Let's make some noise for that. Yeah. Damn it. Let's make some noise for that. Damn it. We we have some fly shit to say rages right now. We yeah. gonna chill because we don't want smoking bills and shit like that. But you know, um, so now you 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 do Friday. Yeah. What makes you say, let me continue this franchise and go and do Friday Part Two? Because now Friday Part Two. Chris Tucker is not a part yeah. of this. Yeah. So what made you still want to say I'm a I'm gonna continue to do that? Well, I, I didn't want to. What? You know, I was like, what? Man, no, Chris. Man, what is this movie? You know, it's like, right. you know, it's like you losing a major piece. It's mm. like Shaq and Kobe breaking up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like how can how could y'all win championships? Mm-hmm. But then I start thinking like, you know, this movie. It's not about two people. Mm. It's about a day. It's about understanding your environment and having right. a little fun, right. laughing at it. So I'm like, yo, it makes sense if we're going to continue this for Craig, maybe to go off the block. Mm. Rancho From all Cuc- the characters you know. Rancho Cucamonga. We're going to introduce you to Y'all had no idea home. that was a real place, by yeah, the way. We're going to be in a new place. Mm. Right. We have a new cast of characters. And mm. then I start seeing it like, yo, when I saw Mike Epps do stand up, I'm like, mm. we have Mike Epps on the show. That on the That's show. Craig yeah. Cousin. Wow. That's yeah. Craig Cousin right wow. there. So I was like, yo, we can we can keep this thing going, uh, you know, and just have my cousin instead of my friend. 
and just clown about being away from the hood. Now be honest, because Chris Tucker destroyed that yes, role. Please, did you did you think Mike Epps? Because now Mike Epps is a no name. Like at this yeah. time, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I remember being in the movie theater. And people being like, when they saw that it wasn't uh, a day day, when yeah. they saw it wasn't smoky, excuse yeah. me, when they saw that it wasn't smoky, like people were, they actually were booing at first mm-hmm. when they seen that they was, and it, and, it, and it transitioned to be like, uh, but did you know that he could hold it down or did you have doubts? I mean, bit? I knew he could hold it down. Okay. I knew that we can make, because Friday is about, it's, it's about a feel. It's more than just mm. one person. You know, housing the movie, it's a, it's its own thing in a way. Right. So, I just knew that the 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 cast that we had and the story, of course, it was going to jar people a little bit. But I knew right. once people got a chance to really mm. feel Mike Epps and see right. him, that his comedy right. is more hood than Smokey's to me. Mm. Uh, and I just felt like people are going, you know. They love him. You mm-hmm. can tell people love Mike Epps. Yep, he killed because it. he's so real and raw with it. Right. And then when we did part three, mm-hmm. you know, bringing Cat Williams mm-hmm. in, bringing in Terry Crews, mm-hmm. it just was uh, OG triple OG. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it just it just uh, mm-hmm. it's just a franchise people love. Mm-hmm. And we want to do another one, but oh, we got to do it right. To that's, that was the question. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, I was going yeah, there. Yeah. We got to do and it right. Did I hear this correct? It's going to be a last Friday with Smokey. And they did. That's what we want. We still trying to get Chris to do it. I need a role it. in that. I know this is very bad that I'm just throwing myself in there, but I think I, got, I, think I belong. All right. Q. Just give no me problem, some. Man, I got you. Just throw me in there. I could be the garbage man. I could be I could be the guy that picks up smoky He's shit. He's auditioning right I could do now. Whatever. I could do whatever. I could do whatever. Because, you know, no, I mean, I'm just such a fan of that. So it, so it will be a last Friday with both of them. I hope so. That's you know, dope. it's like I can't make Chris do it, but... Right. The fans can. Would you do it without him, him though? Or, uh, yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. You know, we do it without I think him. you got a right Russian over there, too. You got to come on. Let's just sit dogs. We're celebrating you tonight, Ice no Cube. Gonna, you know, yeah. I don't know if you know about our show. What it is is, you know, when people in this music business, they got more than 10 years, they try to kick us out. Yeah. They try to say we old. They try to say we washed up. But me, you, EFN, we are prime examples that you can do whatever you want to do as long as you want to do it yep. and continue to have fun. So tonight we are celebrating Ice Cube and his illustrious career because I want to be the East Coast version of Ice Cube. That's yeah. what I'm yeah. People, 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 people want to be Jay-Z and Puff and Nas and Snoop, and that's great. I love those guys. We ain't taking nothing from them. But I look. I, I feel like you're still having fun doing what you're doing. I am, man. You know, right. it's like I got into this as a fan. Mm. You, know, you know, when I first started to just pay attention to hip-hop, it was as a fan. Yeah. And then it, to... Be able to do it just to be able to rap. Right. I felt like that was an accomplishment. But to get this far with the with my career, you know, it's just like I feel like uh, you know, God is smiling on me somewhere. What artist inspired you? Because mm. your penmanship is crazy. Oh man, man, artists like Melly Mel, mm. Chuck D, KRS One, mm. Ice T. Big Daddy Kane, who get who uh, don't get enough credit for, yeah. for wow. being a lyricist. Right. Um, you know, these dudes were our giants. Run DMC right. is like the the blueprint of how you right. do it, you know. Right. So, um, you know, I'm I'm a fan of, of that school of MCs. Now, fuck the police. Yeah. Did you know that 20 years later, people still going to be saying, fuck the police? You, did, you knew the police was never going to get better? <laughs> I was hoping. <laughs> you was hoping. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 no, 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 I, I was hoping it would get better, but right, right. I was hoping people would still be rocking the song. <laughs> right, right. The publishing. But uh, it's a trip. When we was, when we had like laid our lyrics, you know, I was so into making the song that Ren looked over at me and was like, this one right here? Mm-hmm. Is gonna start some shit, right? And was, oh, so y'all knew it. Yeah, he oh. he he just got a just a sense like right. this one right here is gonna start some shit, right. and and ever since he said that, it just put it on my radar, and it was so true because right. you know that was before we released the record. Right. After we released it, it was like it was something you know that I still can't explain how. 
Because in the movie, electric um, that time, you guys was at the studio and they pulled you guys over yeah. in the studio. Yeah. Did that? Actually... They used to sweat us at that studio all the time. Wow. And that was just one incident. Wow. Because it was a, like a Mexican food spot mm-hmm. right down the street. We would walk to, and them Torrance police was on our neck. You know, because they just wasn't used to seeing dudes right. like us walking around. And y'all looking like gangbangers. Yeah, and, yeah. But we in this studio right yeah. here yeah. doing our thing. So, man, a lot, a yeah. lot. Way more than in the movie. It's just right. one time in the movie. Wow. But, but we got it, you know, doing that whole record. Yeah. At least five, six incidents. Wow. Yeah. Now on tour, did it really happen like that? When oh, they, wow. When they said, don't, they, they told you not to perform that record? Yeah. Was it TK that was on yeah. with us that yeah. said he was on the oh, tour? TK, yeah, 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 yeah. TK was crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He was on that tour. Right, yeah. yeah. he, he yeah. said he yeah. was on that tour. They was, uh, they would do it every city, though. They would tell See, you, don't perform this yeah, record. Yeah, they would. You know, we was coming after the Beastie <laughs> Boys had come around, and everybody was like, man, this rap tour stuff is crazy, you know, getting mm-hmm. too out of hand. Then Bobby Brown... Mm-hmm. Went around the country and just Slipping doing coke the <laughs> most, doing the most <laughs> doing <laughs> nastiest, <laughs> sexy show you could do for uh, and, R&B artists. Uh, uh, so they was, by the time N.W.A. was tired, them venues, uh, police, everybody, hotels, were like, was ready. Wow. Was like, nah, man, we ain't having what y'all bringing. Right. So before every show, they would gather us up, some... You know, fat ass police would come with, with <laughs> ordinance of. Wait, you ordinance know, was that? I don't know what that is. It's basically yeah, saying like whatever the these are laws you don't know about oh. that we pulling out our ass oh. from 1876. <laughs> <laughs> if you spit on the sidewalk, <laughs> if you do this, if mm. you obscene on stage, boom, 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 we can't mm. arrest you. And not just in the Bible, though. This is everywhere. Everywhere. Right. Wow. So we hearing that, man, we hear that every night. Right. We getting tired of this, man. Right. It's harassment because right. we seeing rock and rollers and Guns and Roses. They doing what the hell they want to do. Right. So uh, we we just was fed up, and it just it all came together in Detroit that night. Right. And uh, we, we just was like, man, we we gonna do it. And because we was like, man, they ain't gonna cause no riot because they right. kept saying, you do this song, it's gonna cause a riot. You do this song, it's gonna right. cause a riot. Right. And we like, come on, man, it's hip. I ain't gonna cause no damn riot. And we did that song and it caused a damn riot. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Uh, but y'all doubted it the whole time. We doubted it the whole time. <laughs> so, but when I'm performing, I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. You know, this is getting out of hand right uh, now. Uh, I'm saying the crowd, like, you know when it's something, uh, you, you don't perform. Yeah, you know when it's, yeah. and it's funk out in there. And right. it's fighting and it's crazy. And, right. yeah, it just <laughs> kicked it off. Does does Ice Cube consider himself the origin, uh, one of the originators of gangster rap? One of them, yeah. You know, but you gotta you gotta look at Ice T. Ice T. We had yeah. Ice T on the show, who, who bigged you up as yeah. well. Oh, yeah, you yeah. one of his no, best I, friends as well. Ice T, man. You yeah. know, he uh, he's the one who really said it was okay. You know, to, to put it on and and, and and say, yo, you can say what you want to say, mm-hmm. do what you want to do, and uh, you know, he's an architect too, mm-hmm. for sure. So are you in, is, is Ice Cube listening to young the young boys or nah. every now and then okay. you know every now and then you know my my wife my kids put put me up on it all right you know and uh it's all good. And, all right, I, I, yeah, because um I, I was just curious. I was just curious. You know, what's what's your favorite song right now? Any song? Oh man, I ain't got no favorite. You ain't got no favorite. Oh, no, I ain't okay. got no favorite. I'll be listening. I'm liking to that. that uh I'm liking that Big Sean. Okay. Right now, you know. Okay. That's okay. not it took a L. That's not a bounce back. Yeah, I like so, that. So now that you conquered the movie world, like uh you you open the doors for people like me to to live out my dream. Mm-hmm. We hearing that you're doing the what is it, big three? The big three. The big three. Yeah. Now explain to us for those who that didn't know what the big three is. The big three is uh professional three on three basketball mm-hmm. it's played by retired NBA players. But I'm hearing it's a full court, half three court. On? Oh, half court. Okay, half court, three on three. Okay. And you know how you know when dudes play three on three, it gets right. it get rough in there. So, right. <laughs> so we gonna have dudes going hard. But you coaching? Uh, you ain't playing, no, I ain't right? coaching at all. Oh I'm, no, I'm just a founder. Oh okay. We gonna have pros. It's for <laughs> pros. It ain't for. This ain't no celebrity game. Because I heard you on a good day. No, on a good day, you, you you said you nice in basketball. Yeah, I'm, I ain't that nice. Right. <laughs> I'm asking. Not, I'm not asking. Play with I'm dudes. thinking you gonna play in the game. Nah, I'm like, hold nah. up. This ain't no joke. No <laughs> yeah, gimmick. Yeah. Okay. This ain't no Mountain Dew amateur. <laughs> right. am- 
Nike so it's retired amateur. because we hear Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. Oh. Uh, Chauncey Billups. Chauncey Billups. Wow. Uh, Jermaine O'Neal. Wow. Um, Steven Jackson. Wow. Rashard Lewis. Uh, White Kenny chocolate. Anderson, Kenny Anderson, he Kenny Anderson, he, yeah. he he gonna uh, you know them, some of them dudes got to go to the combine. Mm. We're what gonna see that? what's the combine. Combine is we gonna see what they got. Oh, we're gonna oh, see if they still got wow. it. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, we're gonna put well, them through it. You well, know, you gotta have the game, just not well. the name. You know what I mean? <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So what what does Ice Cube like more? Do you like movies or music more? Uh, I love them both. You know, but music is my. That's my baby, you know. That's mm-hmm. I could do what I, I want to do when it comes to music. It's mm-hmm. no meetings, no committee, right. no you know right. bunch of people. You know, with right. a movie, you got a hundred people working on one project. Yeah. You know, but with a record, you know, I can work on a hundred records, just one man, right. if I want to. So, um, you know, my records are more um, personal, I guess. Okay. Yo, so, what, what, one of the illest collaborations, mm-hmm. I think. That people don't acknowledge or give it as much props as when you did America's Most Wanted with the Bomb mm. Squad. Yeah, because mm. I remember back then there's no internet. I remember right. I go to, you go to the mall and you go in the rap but section. But wasn't the Bomb Squad find... producers? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. But it's, yeah. it's Public Enemy basically. Right. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? That's yeah. what made the sounds. Right. So you go. NWA is my favorite group at the time. Right. Ice Cube's my favorite artist in NWA. Mm-hmm. Public Enemy is one of my favorite groups. Mm-hmm. I go in the store mm. and you don't get internet, you don't get tweeted, right. you don't see nothing. Right. And I see America's Most Wanted, right. produced by the Bomb Squad. Right. I nearly lost my mind. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Those was my favorite producers. You know, wow. I worked with Dre, but my but favorite producers was the Bomb Squad. I I, uh, I met Chuck on tour, mm-hmm. and when I left the group, I went up to Def Jam to to look for a producer by the name of Sam Sever. Who had worked with uh, Third Base. Yeah. That Third Base album was out. And they had dope beats on it, so Leo was like, yo, I'll hook you up with Sam. And, and the nigga Sam never showed up to the meeting, so I was wow. like, <laughs> so I boun- I'm bouncing, I'm leaving, and coming down the hall is Chuck D. Chuck wow. was like, yo, what you doing here? I told him what was up. He was like, man, come to the studio. I'm doing a record tonight with Big Daddy Kane called Burn Hollywood Burn. If you want, if you want to be on it, if you want to be on it, come to the studio. That'll let people know you solo. I'm like, right. shit, I'm there. Right. <laughs> I was there early. Right. And um, did that record, and I was just telling them. And then uh, Hank Shockley, Keith Shockley was in there. And I was saying, yo, you know, I'm leaving the group, and I need to do my own album. I told I said, I said, I told everybody I was coming out here to get production, and they laughed at me, mm-hmm. right? Because that's what I heard, that they was like, what, you in New York? Mm-hmm. That shit going to be whack. Mm-hmm. So... When 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 Hank when Hank heard that that turned him on he was uh, like what they laughed uh, I said yeah they laughed they don't think I can get a record done out here uh, he was like man we will do the whole record if you want to and y'all did a lot of songs a lot of songs were on that record we did everything now 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 we I can't tell me and my homies earlier was debating that when you left NWA that it was <laughs> them who took a shot at you first yeah it was it was not you no okay America's the- most wanted. I don't say nothing about NWA. Right, right. That's how I see. They made the Benedict Arnold line. Yeah, that yeah. was. And then you came back with No Vaseline. I hit him a little bit with 100 that might Miles. Be I hit him a little bit on the end of Jacket for Beats. Right. Because mm. I had a song called 100 Miles yep. and Running. Mm. And uh, so I just gave him a little, little jab just to see what they would do. Right. Then they kind of came out with a little more on, on that Niggas for Life album. Right. And then I was like, man, I'm going in. <laughs> no Vaseline, hands down. Nah, well, it's hard, illest probably the illest disc records yeah. of all time. And you know what else is great to see is that see you and Common together. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. You and Common man. together. It's like, good, man. It to, it's cool to, to, if you got to beef with somebody, mm-hmm. it's better to squash it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's better to squash it. Right. Um, so it's cool, you know. We had a misunderstanding years, years ago. Yeah, because I never and knew what that started over. It was just a misunderstanding, yeah. you know. Um, mm-hmm. And it's cool that we got past it, grown men style. Right. Now, um, did you ever get to see the Tupac movie? No, I ain't seen it yet. What, 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 what was your relationship with Pac? We was cool. You know, that was one of the homies. Right. Um, you know, I just looked at him as I look at, you know, most of the guys that that's in right. the game that I'm cool right. with. You right. know, just one of the homies that... Uh, Right. And, you know, it's kind of spiraled out of control. Right, yeah, definitely. Is Cube doing another album? Of course. Oh, let's make, yeah, let's yeah. Let's make that announcement right now. Let's make that announcement. We got the name of the album? Everything's Corrupt. Everything's, Everything's Corrupt. corrupt. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And now, now is Cube 
independent or? No, I'm on Interscope. Oh, oh Interscope. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Jimmy Iovine. Wow, that's the kind of like a 360, even though like no, Jimmy was death row. He didn't have nothing to do with NWA. No, no, no. He had nothing to do with NWA. Right. Yeah, that's I don't, priority. I don't even know, yeah. priority. I don't even know if he was still at Interscope. Right, yeah, so. right. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just signed a deal with them. Do you right. think do you think Death Certificate gets its just due? I think that's one of the best albums, uh, period, in hip hop. Well, you know, from fans, from people like you, we're gonna mm. release the twenty fifth year anniversary mm. of that next month. Um and I got three new songs on that. So nice. it's gonna be cool to to you know, put that album back oh, out. Oh, you can put it time. back out. Yeah, wow. Back out. Yeah. You should Especially, make a movie about summer vacation. Yeah, they, that's everybody so, say that. No, I heard you got a movie called mind. Vacation coming up. Um, oh, what, with vac- John Cena, it's, it's called Vacation Friends, and Vacation they, Friends. They still, we still putting it together. That's that's in the still in the infant stages. But it's filmed already. No, or no, no, we haven't shot okay. it yet. Oh, because uh, the writers Tim and Tom, yeah, were they the writers? Um, um, they I actually met with them, and they 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 was talking about the vacation. Movie. Yeah, it's it's, a good it was movie. so totally dope, man. Cube, because I see your people are signaling us. So you got to go. Yeah, you know what I mean. But you know, this is hip hip hop. These people, we they need to know. So. I, what is next for Cube, though? Oh, uh, you know, just I got the Hip Hop Squares coming out on yeah, Hollywood Squares, right? Yeah, Hollywood Squares, like, Hollywood it's, it's, squares it's, but with hip hoppers, you know what oh, I mean? Oh, wow. People, and it's fun. Who's hosting that? Uh, D Ray. Okay. Oh, that's the he gets sick. I'm here. Right? Okay, I got you. <laughs> you, know, you need to come back. I'm about to come do I'm an episode next year. Yeah, yeah, come on. Anything, you gotta come do you, an episode. First off, Cube, <laughs> listen, I'm going to just be honest. We're in an industry that is full of fake people. So when I meet a real brother like you, when I sat down and we vibed that day, it's nothing more that I want to do is always just give you, a person like you, respect and continue because you know why? The older we get, the better we get and the more that we should know yes. that we should big up each other. Us as, not just black people, but us as hip hop because we're a part of a fraternity. Yes. It, it's bigger, it transcends race. It's bigger than just me, us just being black and us just, I'm being Puerto Rican and you being Cuban. It's bigger than that. We're all part of a hip hop fraternity. And if we don't continue to big each other up, there won't be nobody else. And you're a person that we got to continue to big up. You're continuously doing great work. I sat there and I watched that movie in awe. Like, I was just like, wow, this shit was funny from the beginning. Yeah. And, like, how do you always get the tough guy roles? Do you request the tough guy roles or <laughs> nah. they just come to you? I mean, they come to me. You know, uh, <laughs> people feel like, you know, when you do a movie, you want, right. you got you got, you got got characters and you got it like, yo, mm-hmm. I see this person as that. Mm-hmm. I see that you don't always get who you see. Right. But, you know, people, you know, put you right. in a category right. and start, you know, casting you on that level. That's so dope. And you know what else I got to big up before you leave the here? You know, I went to DJ Drama Studio because I had an interview real quick. And you were there, and I just watched you. I was trying to hide and just peeped you. And I seen you rolling the limo. Let's make some noise for the limo. Yeah. Yeah. I said, my man, that is some real, real nigga shit. Like, you you stuck with the limo. I got you had a suburban. Yeah, you got to jump into no SUV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ain't security. <laughs> Yo, I... I really appreciated that. I really yeah. sat there. And yo, listen, we really appreciate as you being both of, both of our um, favorite rappers and, you know, um, the, the, what you transition to is a great example for young uh, 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 hip hoppers, period. Uh, that People, period. It doesn't stop with hip hop. No. You know what I'm saying? Like no. you look at, uh, you look at, uh, uh, what is it? Kenny Smith and Charles Barkley. They all set up a platform that after hip hop, they can do something. But, if it wasn't for you, you started there first with Friday, and that we could actually still be relevant, still be out here, still do our thing. You ain't got to change. No. And and you're the godfather of that. We got to make I some noise for that guy. Yeah. 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 Glad you're on the mic, man. You yes. know, dudes yeah. like you, you yes. know what I mean? Yes. Definitely yes. Uh, need to be heard right. on the regular. Mm. And uh, mm. it's much love, man. Much appreciate. It's only a million people who listen to us. Not a lot of people. Thank you so much, Q. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, my brother. Take the flick. Yeah. 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 Take a quick yeah. flick. Oh, yeah. Uh, flick it.